Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Caliber Club TV. I'm Ryan Jeske, I'm your host. Today I would like to conclude my three-part series on bug out bags and my go pack. Welcome back everyone. I wanted to take just a minute and ask that if you enjoy our content, please share our videos on your social media pages. That'll help us gain a lot of traction. Also, don't forget to like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notifications bell icon. That'll help keep you up to date whenever we release a new video. All right guys, welcome back. So before we go and take a look at the GoPack itself, I wanted to discuss the theory behind the GoPack because I think it's important. This bag is not necessarily a bug out bag. It is more of a kit. It's not something that's designed to be picked up, put on your back and hiked for miles or anything along those lines. I built this bag knowing that I have an off grid bug out location that I can travel to. I have routes that I can take that are off road. I have routes that are on road. I have strictly walking, hiking, pulling, um, dirt biking routes, things like that to get to this location. So as long as I have a vehicle capable of getting me to that location, I'm able to bring this bag. And this bag has everything I could ever possibly need to start anew from a new location. Um, so what I figured I could do is take you guys into my workshop, I'll open it up, I'll start taking a look at everything inside, I'll show you what it is, I'll tell you a little bit of why I, why I chose that, um, and then I'll take some photographs and I'll give you guys some good pictures of, of most of the items, if not all of the items that I carry in the bag. So let's go ahead, let's go take a look. So here we are back in the workshop with the go pack. Um, I wanted to measure it. I wanted to just kind of give you guys some measurements because I know sometimes it's hard to tell how big things are. Um, but it's about 37 inches tall, um, you know, without the handle. And again, keep in mind that I didn't build this bag for a guy to carry it, drag it miles or anything like that. It's meant to be transported in some form or fashion. So I think the best way to go about reviewing this bag is to show you how the system works, how it rolls on the, on the axle. Then I'll set it back up and I'll review everything on the outside of the bag. I did show this in video the other day, but I'll go over it again. Um, then I will show you how to take the actual bag out of the pack frame and I'll be able to show you the axle system at that point. And then from there, I can open up the bag and show you all of the items in the bag. So as you can see, this would be something along the lines of a pull bag that would roll through the airport. Um, only this is a badass version. First thing, I have a canteen. I got this um, in a subscription pack. I, it's big, bulky, but I threw it on the outside because what else was I gonna do with it? I like to carry a Miller Brothers Blades Bowie Flagrant Beard Hatchet. I always like to keep a headlamp on the outside of the bag, uh, my pillow, some camping gear, a basic knife, a uh, Sunto compass, tie straps, and a little mini first aid kit, and that's all that I really have in that pack. So the next thing we have on the outside of the pack, I carry some Gators sunglasses. They're pretty tough. They're a retractable cord that uh, I can hook gear on that I'm trying to get to real quick. It's quick, quick loop and tie systems. Um, I have a couple of walkies. And I have my tent. Uh, I also have one of those emergency um, survival bracelets I got from somebody for Christmas or something like that. It's nice to have on the outside with the paracord, compass, little tools, little extras. I always keep an open, empty pack on the side because you never know what you're gonna find along the way. Okay, so let me show you how this thing comes out of the pack. It's really not that amazing or difficult. It's just a hazard force smuggler bag inside of a pack frame that wraps around. There's one strap right here up on top that comes off and there's two straps along the side that come off. There's one here and one here. When this comes off, your tent comes out. And I also keep a tarp, a light tarp on the outside. Now we should be free to take the bag out of the pack. Okay guys, so I really wanted to show you the pack frame and how this is set up. Uh, these are just straps that go along the side, right? They fold around. They've got buckles on them. Should also note that wrapped up back here, I do keep a pretty expensive Garmin GPS um, and a flashlight, a couple other little miscellaneous tools. You can kind of see what I did. You know, it's not the easiest thing to show you, but I built an axle 
that has lawnmower tires, a steel pipe with a threaded pipe through the middle, and the tires have bearings on them. I've then strapped it through the webbing system here, and I used the webbing, uh, I used to just wrap straight around. I wrapped it around, back, up, back around itself so that every time you pull, this thing's gonna get tighter. So that is the pack frame. The pack frame, um, I think, is a valuable thing to have in a bug out kit in a situation because you could strap anything of any size and shape that you want to this pack and it will haul it. I've been working on getting a mono walker contract. Um, I, I talked to the owner of the company and he said that they are manufacturing in Germany currently. I'm gonna try to get myself one so that I have my own mono walker for this actual setup and then I can take that and hopefully spin a deal out of it and get some here in the United States. Now that it's out of the frame, I've got a knife down here on the side. It is a uh, Damascus, uh, just a, a blade that I bought at a gun show. Um, I've got a couple of clips hanging on around here, a uh, flagrant beard knife, a uh, little dagger knife, as well as a Leatherman multi-tool. This is accessible from the bottom on the outside of the pack. Um, so let's get into the first bag, first section. In the first section of the pack, I have another one of those tarps. I really like them. They're nylon tarps. They're wonderful. They're light. They compact nicely. Um, I carry a Leatherman. A write in the rain notebook is always good to have. I like that. I have a couple of bottles of water. I also have a Shamah. I don't know how to say that. I think that is good to have uh, for a hat, neck, face option. A lot of firearm parts, and you'll see why eventually. Um, I have a bolt carrier group for an M16 or an AR-15. Surefire flashlight. I have a Delta lighter, some sunscreen, tent stakes, an AR-15 carbon scraper. I have a bunch of glow sticks as well as a map. Uh, marker right in the rain pen, a regular pen and a pencil. I also have some maps in here uh, of the United States. I have a set of zip ties as well. Okay guys, so let's move on to the second pouch here. The second pouch, I carry a number of cool items. Uh, the first thing that I carry that's really cool is a Dark Angel medical visor kit. I additionally have um, a surgical instruments kit. I really like that. You can get them most anywhere. A very small little uh, first aid kit. Some Coleman Camp Soap. I really like them because they're light. Some Repel, um, some more sunscreen, and some toothpaste. Earplugs, I always like to have earplugs everywhere. Uh, additionally, I have a cat tourniquet. Cat tourniquets are my favorite. Some fishing lines, some bobbers, uh, some, some real small fishing gear. This is a rechargeable lighter, a tech fire. Um, I always keep a bunch of medications uh, that I personally take. Um, ibuprofen, I have a, a bulging disc in my back, uh, some things like that. So I like to have a little bit of medication and of course a toothbrush. I throw an MRE in there. I'm actually gonna change that out pretty soon because um, I don't really like MREs. I think I can get more bang for my buck here out of uh, freeze dried. All right, everyone, let's get into pack number three. This is the last outside bag. This one's not real big, um, but it's packed full of some decent stuff. I keep Mylar blankets, emergency poncho, some soap. I'm a big fan of these wallet cards. I think they're cool. You know, they've got lock picking, fishing, uh, sewing needles, things like that. They're real thin little pieces. Um, I, I think they're cool to have. Ram oil, some twine. It was real lightweight twine, and I figured uh, there's times where I don't need to use heavy duty cordage for something, so why am I carrying that extra weight? All right, guys, so I wanted to shoot this from a different angle because this bag is, is pretty unique. It flips open this way. Um, there are four clips. There's two here and two here that unbuckle, um, and I figured that if we shoot from this angle, it would uh, just make it a little bit more interesting. You could see everything, and I can tear through it a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and open the bag, and then... I'm gonna go through these items with you uh, really pretty quickly. Um, I carry a hammock, a uh, Katadin water purifier, a zero, I'm sorry, a 20 to 40 degree cool weather sleeping bag. Um, this is a small camp towel. I like to keep the packaging on it because I can use that for a bag of some sort. Gloves are always a must. These are waterproof, warm glacier gloves. 
keep an extra pair of socks, an extra pair of Beartooth radios, an extra face mask. This face mask comes out of the Uncharted supply kit. I also have some charging units for my Beartooth unit. There's a second MRE, uh, that's my backup food. Small dry box water container. I like to carry a large hyper tough pry bar. These are invaluable everywhere you go. Uh, Goal Zero, this is a small personal solar panel. Um, a handsaw. This is the kind that um, you put around the tree. Fuel tablets, uh, emergency candles, and some lighter gloves. These are more like shooting gloves for me. Um, these are a number of different uh, compression bags. Compression bags are always really nice to have. This is my dry pack. This will cover my entire pouch. So hoopals, that's for you. Uh, I do have an air mattress. This is a lightweight, extremely small blow up air mattress. It only covers uh, kind of your chest to your butt. X pots make some really, really awesome gear. They can be actually used to cook uh, cups, bowls, pots, the whole nine. Those are wonderful. This is a mini firebox, uh, real simple. You know, you put four sides together and you can have yourself a small little wood stove. Uh, Frog Togs makes great lightweight waterproof gear. It also works as a second outfit. Um, I like to keep a little bit of scent killer deodorant. I use that hunting. This is the Uncharted Supply Radio that I showed you in the other video. I like to keep a second one of those in here. Along with a set of goggles, uh, I saw a video of a guy who had some other goggles that were very, very compact and small. I've been trying to find them for some time. I can't locate them. Uh, these come from Uncharted Supply as well. Um, this is a small backpack. It folds out of itself. Um, I have a small, couple small sets of eating utensils. This here is a hydro pack. This is uh, water storage. I always like to have some tape, Gorilla Tape. That stuff can work wonders in a sticky situation. Bic lighters, a bunch of miscellaneous cords um, for setting up tents and shelters, things like that. Now. This pack, I'm gonna set aside just for a moment because I'm gonna explain this to you along with the firearm in just a minute. Um, so I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now I do also have a bow saw, uh, as well as some water storage containers. Um, and that should be it for this layer. Um, inside of here, these open up. I could use this pack as a padding. I have a number of things in here. This is an air pump. Uh, it can be used for a number of different things. It works great with the uh, air mattress, air mattress. Um, I have a number of batteries because I have some thermal optics in here uh, down with the firearm that those go to. Uh, I like to keep um, some books and some literature in here. Edible wild plants guide, medicinal plants, uh, a couple of flyers, field dressing, knots, uh, edible wild plants. Just some information that's good to have around. Um, not to mention that when you're out in those scenarios, you're gonna be bored, so this is good reading information. I also have, this was a, a spear I got from a subscription box. I really liked, it's really lightweight, and you can spear fish game with it. Uh, all you need is a tree branch. Now we're gonna get into, of course, my favorite section, the security. I need to preface the security section by, by reminding you that I am a federally licensed firearms manufacturer. I'm licensed to build machine guns, um, so I'm able to have some things that you may not actually be able to have, but I'm gonna share with you my kit anyway. Um, I'll try to share what items those are as I'm going. So uh, the first thing I wanted to share with you were breech pens. These are really, really cool. Um, look them up. I will try to put a link in the description or in the video. Uh, these are basically, you tear them open, spark them, light them, and you can cut through steel with them. I'm talking steel doors, chains, locks, things like that. I carry three of them. Um, I believe they're uh, about $30 a piece, something like that. Um, I like to carry three, uh, three 30 round magazines of AR-15 ammo with green tip armor piercing. Uh, I have a spare watch. I usually always wear uh, mechanical watches, but I do have a decent spare watch in here along with some flex cuffs. I also have a very, very high-end laser aiming device. This is uh, designed to be a weapon-mounted laser. Um, it's pretty cool. It's serious. This isn't something you want to shine in your eyes. This isn't something that most people have access to. Um, on top of that, 
I carry an AR Armorer's tool. This is, I believe, a Leatherman. Yeah, this is the Leatherman tool. And that one is designed with tools for uh, AR-15s and M16 platforms, which is what I typically run. Um, now I'm gonna show you the weapon. The weapon is a Daniel Defense pistol. Okay, this is a, an AR-15 pistol. I have a uh, binary trigger in it. So what that is going to do is somewhat simulate full auto fire. It's not really truly simulating it, but when you pull the trigger, it will fire. And when you release the trigger, it will fire. This weapon has been checked prior to me opening this bag for you. Um, on top of this, I run a Trigicon RMR and this is a Skeet IR thermal. That is a thermal optic. So I am able to run full thermal red dot optics out of this pack. Um, I have spare batteries for this and uh, this is absolutely a beautiful, ha uh, beautiful handgun. <laughs> it's a beautiful firearm. Um, now, I have a spare flashlight. This is a rechargeable flashlight. I always like to keep one of those. Now, the one part of my kit that I am missing because I purchased a suppressor for this firearm through a dealer, uh, personally through a dealer, not through my dealer. So I, um, I, I am waiting on my suppressor. That'll go right in here, and then I will have a full suppressed thermal night vision hunting defensive weapon right here. So now the last thing that I wanted to get into, and I'm going to do this relatively quick, were the spare parts that I carry. Earlier, I showed you guys a bolt carrier group. That is something that I carry. I put it in the front because it's heavy, bulky, and it just kind of kept the weight down at the bottom of the bag. So this is a thread adapter. It allows you to thread it onto the muzzle of one of your firearms, and then you can adapt to a, a number of different thread pitches for different suppressors, uh, suppression options, things like that. Now inside of my bag here, I basically carry the entire set of internals for an M16 and an AR-15. So I have a spare trigger. I have um, gas tube, gas block. Uh, I have a spare buffer tube, a spare stock, a uh, spare buffer spring, a spare buffer, a spare hand grip. Um, I even have tools here for me to manufacture a machine gun out of the firearm that's in here. So guys, I hope you keep in mind that this is not a bug out bag. This is my go pack. I call it a go pack. It's really a bug out kit. It's not meant to be carried by a human being, um, although it is possible in dire situations. Once I get the mono walker cart, it will definitely be something that's doable. Uh, the mono walker will uh, allow half of the weight to be on the axle and half of the weight to be on you, which is supported by shoulder straps and a belt. It's a pretty cool setup. This whole pack weighs about 85 pounds, so I'm, I'm under no delusion that it's something that I want to carry on my back. That does include the pack frame, the axle, and the whole nine. So guys, that is a conclusion to my three-part series on bug out bags and go packs. I know there's a million different types of kits and everybody has a million different opinions on all of them, but I wanted to show you mine. I wanted to show you what I do. Uh, I also want to thank you for watching, for subscribing to our channel, for liking our videos. Please check us out at prescottcalclub.com. We have an online store and until next time, you guys stay safe and keep prepping.